I needed that Budweiser, ice cold. Ah, the Budweiser gauged. Hmm. Amara, please rinse my glass and put it on my fridge. I needed that. Oh. Hello, everyone. I'm Daddy Freeze, convener of the Free the Sheeple Movement and leader of the Free Nation in Christ. I greet you and I bring glad tidings. I try to get a few minutes of sleep. And I woke up so thirsty. I have some water right here, as I usually do. But something deep in me said, get that Budweiser. Luckily, I had a can in the fridge. I turned it into my glass. And man, that was some good stuff. So the topic today is the other side of relocating abroad. First things first, I want to tell you that I'm someone who's well-traveled. I have traveled to many countries, aside from China and Japan and most parts of Asia, I've been to the following countries. I'm trying to remember all of them. I've been to the Netherlands, I've been to Germany, France, Monaco, four countries, even though Monaco and south of France is a train ride, and if you're going to Monaco, you most probably would land in Nice and take the train or the helicopter to Monaco. I've been to Turkey, Romania, Hungary. Um, try to remember uh, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, South Africa, Kenya. That's already ten places. Um, England, Scotland, eleven, twelve. Um, turn this thing to me and reduce to one. Uh. Trying to remember where else I've been to. No, I've never been to Australia. America, Canada. Thank you for reminding me. America, I've been to Boston, New York, uh, New Jersey, um, California in America. What took me to all these places? Some work, some holiday, some Formula One. Um, my Nickelodeon Award took me to California. Um, I went to Hollywood. Because I won the Nickelodeon, uh, Nickelodeon Award in Hollywood. Um, I won my NEA in New York. Um, first time I was nominated. Second time I won the award. So I've been to New York twice. I've been to New Jersey once. I've been to Boston once. And I've been to California once. I've been to Ghana. I've been to Italy. Thank you very much. Never been to Hawaii. Been to Switzerland. I was actually in Switzerland at a point for a week. Um, so easily, if I remember every uh, every one I've been to, it would be like 20 countries. And before I go into um, what my experience has been, I first of all wanted to say something. Um, please, guys, the fact that my number is available does not give you the right to call my number 
and just talk anyhow. One big buffoon just sent me a message and says, "Hey, Daddy Freeze, let people believe what they wanted, what they want to believe in Christianity." My question to those people are. If they were meant to believe what they were meant to believe, and anybody can just believe whatever they want, why did Christ enter the temple with a cane? Those people who were selling in the temple were not, they were not be, um, worshipping idols. They were selling what you needed to do the traditional Jewish cleansing. Go and buy two doves, go and buy one goat, go and buy for the for the sin offerings for the purification rites of the jews in those days so they're not worshiping idols they were not it's just that christ felt that it had become a marketplace and why did he flog them why didn't he just allow them to believe whatever they wanted to believe why didn't he allow why did he educate them why did he and that was actually the beginning of his end at least on the earth same thing you would find in Acts chapter 15, when some people came from, and, um, from um, Jerusalem, Judea, and, and they were preaching in Antioch of Syria, and they said, you needed circumcision, and Paul and Co. went to fight them. Why couldn't Paul allow them, say, you know what, you need circumcision, I don't need circumcision, we all can believe whatever it is we want to believe. Please keep that buffoonery away from me. The reason why Christianity is upside down is because of all these stupid beliefs that have been added so please if you if you don't like what i preach just do me a big favor and follow me not be you where i won't preach to go change my destiny and not be me where you know go listen to go change your own destiny i don't need your advice the best you can do for me and for yourself is there's a button called unfollow use it avoid me so please i'm begging you in god's name i don't if you give me advice i've been blocking people this one i will shake away for you before i block you another thing i don't want you to do is please don't send me nsdpc uh, seven o'clock fire prayer i will shake away for you if you send me that thing i beg you my life is a walking testimony i don't need to to join somewhere at seven o'clock go, go and join some people in their office where they are sitting down there working and collecting salary for when me i have my own office please, please please if you i will shake me for you if you send me that that rubbish i will shake me for you don't send it to me please go there and waste your morning hours praying when your mates are working you will need the prayer regularly i don't need it please and my dear brothers and sisters, especially my brothers, those of you that your wives are going there, very soon, let me leave that one, nothing concerns me. Like I said, please, few things that you can keep away from me. If you don't, you don't need to like me, just if you avoid these things, me and you will not quarrel. It's not by force. I will not. Let me tell you, yeah. let me show you something what I do. I just needed to pass this message across because it really stresses me. Look at this. I get, before messages come to me on Instagram, I get request messages, message requests. Look at what somebody sent me. No problem. Just delete. I'm not even going to read it. Boom. Delete. Anybody that, look at this. I now get, aside from message requests, I now get what you call hidden messages because of the hidden words. I put some words that I don't want to see. This person is saying hello. I'm clicking on it. The person is following me. No account nothing you are saying hello what kind of nonsense hello is that i don't follow faceless people another delete block i'm not even going to read whatever it is you're saying so if you want to send me messages don't send me if i don't know you don't beg me for money okay if i don't know you don't beg me for money uh ryan bid one says you are you overestimate yourself rest in jesus name it's not you that i have a problem with it's the woman who walked past postino in the pharmacy and decided to keep an abion pregnancy for nine whole months and then decided to use goats to do your naming ceremony that's the person me and name her fight i'll be me and her 
she walked to her go bah. As you be like that, you 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 be like waiting be like menstrual cramps where they no just happen. Menstrual cramps that didn't happen that they allowed to turn to begin. Nine be you. I overestimate myself. Glory life they me not. Ah, Emma wa be on ye. Ah, the rather rada on be on go go. Come on, leave this place. Block we read down. I overestimate myself. Now that I've blocked this, show me what it is that you want to do. Nonsense. Please, 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 please. Imagine. Person we suppose we suppose don't follow menstrual cramp. Go, you they here, they follow me argue. So back to those of you that Baba, I don't like to curse. Let me make a no lie. I, I used to when I was younger, I was good at it. Now I don't like to because it's unchristian like and I don't like it. But let me warn you, I will give it to you without hesitation to you cross me. I will give it to you. So please let everybody be of their good behavior. You will never see me go and look for your trouble. But once you cross enter my camp, you will collect. I'm not looking for followers. I've realized that there are some people, their, their head be like, say, they pour cement inside. You know that machine where the belly, they turn like, where they mix mortar. You don't know what it be mortar, conquer it. Now, so their head be in a cement they inside the machine. Their head, they turn the cement. If they are loud and small, like the head would just set like that, beam. Everything would go to one big block. Now, so they be not their destiny, they worthless. No need to argue with them. And if they know if you explain anything, give them. They be like those chickens for Animal Farm. If they teach them for uh, A, B, C, they go know them. Then they teach them C, D, E, then they go forget A, B, C. Then they go know A, C, D, E. Then when you say, no, 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 be only C, D, E, learn A, B, C, they will come forget C, D, E. So it's that they know A, B, C, or they know C, D, E, but they cannot know the two at the same time. Please, you are not my followers. God did not send Christ down with a gospel for Okbo news. Please. There is a certain IQ level you have. You cannot be saved because Oriente daughter. Some of you, they rust way they inside your brain. Eh? If they paint inside your head and they rust, your brain goes still they rust, they go. Because the level of oxidation will don't occur inside your, your brain and reduction. Nothing if you walk there again. So please, I beg you in God's name, eh? so that we no go fight. No cross enter my yard. Me too, I no go cross enter your own. You don't see me for your page before. You where they can't send me the message or DM. You don't see me for your page before. I know you. I don't know you. I don't know your papa. I don't know your mama. I don't know anything about you. Come come my page. Come they give me advice. Special advisor. Yeah. National advisor. Advising council. Please, 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 please. I don't want to see you. Kema by my My cause they catch people. Mola Shelenu, a bag buntan soy, in my shape with my mama Telia Kirini, or my simbi or my dien. So please, just stay your lane. So that is it. Hmm. So can I start the real topic we're here from? Okay, good. Now, someone say I too talk. Oh, the shaft egg bag. As in, your destiny just wants to be unfortunate today. And you are and, and something inside you is saying, avoid being unfortunate. Avoid being unfortunate. My yaleri buruku, my sheri bu. But your destiny is dragging you towards a ribuism. To ba shori buruku le ni o le son. O bodo shori buruku ki le to mo. O ade shelo dindi. Come and collect your blocking. Ten more minutes. Bah. Then you're within life. Block, block, block. Let me tell you what I do, you guys don't realize, eh? Just to keep the sanity in my page. Sometimes I even put up something controversial. No, no, no. Forget the on my page what I put up. I go to all the blogs and I comment there. When I comment there, everybody that says nonsense under my comments, I will block all of them and delete my comments. So you will not even see my page.
So, no, 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 be say small thing, they distract me. Today, I don't mean say I go talk this thing. As I don't talk, I'm make una behave. From now on, I go just the block, and I go just the collect the go. Someone said I should talk about Obi. What do Obi? I still talk to Obi today. He's doing very well. Nothing is bothering him. Oh, sorry. Yes. Um, I think he mentioned Quilox. I say Quilox. Cubana uh, being closed at a point, and then cooperating with investigations. If I remember clearly, and I trust Obi. Obi is a man of his word. A very a very diligent and dignified somebody who respects the law and behaves himself very well. And whatever happened at his club, I don't see why we're blaming him for it. Those of you that are blaming him. Sorry, the Budweiser did my head, so my head not too straight too much. <laughs> now, let me go back to the topic. We've been distracted enough. 16 minutes of distraction. Oh, I enjoyed it so much. Now, let me face the... What, what brought me here originally. The other side of living abroad. I've been to at least 20 countries in my life. Someone said that if you, if you be Renu or Mokri, for no get follower. Why? Why? People don't like the truth. Oh, Peter Obi, oh, 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 oh. I thought you were saying Obi Kubana. Peter Obi is amazing. He's a wonderful guy too. So, let me finish what I was saying. I've traveled to many countries. I don't know if I added my mom's country, Romania. I've, every five years, I have to go to Romania to renew my passport. And I'm usually there for about two weeks. Locked away in Romania. Um, you know? So... There's one thing I have noticed, especially in places like the UK. I noticed it in the UK. I noticed it in Canada. I noticed it in America. I noticed it to an extent in Dubai, not that much, but to an extent in Dubai. I also noticed it, I'm trying to remember where I noticed it more. Mostly the US, the UK, and Canada. I noticed a brand of suffering and smiling. Um, you see, sometimes they think they have money. Let me tell you something in 19 sorry not 19 in 2000 and uh, 10 2009 10 11 maybe as far as 12 a thousand dollars was about a hundred and fifty thousand naira so you change one thousand dollars it was about one hundred and fifty thousand naira. i remember then <laughs> My salary in Cool FM was about 360,000 Naira. About 2012, thereabout. And a dollar was about 150, 160K. Which meant in Nigeria, in Nigerian economy, I was earning about $2,000 a month. That's aside from the many hustles and the gigs and all the other things we're doing. So if you were making $10,000 a month in the US, by the time we add all our hustles together, we were making about that or sometimes even more than that because $1,000 was about 1.7 million or 1.6 million thereabout. It wasn't so much money to us here because Naira had value. In today's world, $10,000 is 6 million naira. Not just 6 million, about 6 million, 6.1 million. Because the current exchange rate is 612 million. Uh, sorry, 612 naira to a dollar. 
You see, it looks like even the people who are managing abroad are doing well. Not because they're doing well, but because the Naira value is so weak. So you send your father or mother or brother $2,000 or pounds is going to be one point something million naira. It's going to be a big sum. So, there's one thing I notice with people living abroad. You can see, you can see the underlying depression. I've noticed it. I can, you see, one thing with me is I'm very good at. You put your sugar coat, it's like Niva Queen. Any sugar where they like to take coat and once you touch your tongue, the bitterness could just show under. The bitterness could just show under. When a Nigerian comes there, you see the excitement in these people. They're so excited. They 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 I can see it. I can perceive it. They try to camouflage it. And, oh, wow, we're doing well. Oh, I've got a big house. I've got this. I've got that. But you see, I brought in, if Nigeria were good, if everything was able to work, forget the power cuts. Forget the power cuts. Power is cutting uh, every day. Let's even imagine my estate. We didn't have... 24 hours light. Let's even imagine where I was on ordinary Nepa. They will bring the light. Sometimes you have to. Nigeria has a vibe. A vibrant vibe. Nigeria exudes vibrancy, exudes happiness. Abroad, You will work. Some people work three jobs. Abroad, they'll tell you family is everything. Some people are so busy working, they don't even have time for the family. So I sat down and I thought about it. Am I the only one seeing this? Maybe I'm getting the wrong vibe. But everybody, the signs I'm seeing can't be wrong. You understand? I was in Dubai the other day and I, I showed up on a Sunday and I wanted to host Praise Jam back then on a Sunday. Only three people showed up. Why? Everybody had to go to work. And I'm like, okay, Daddy Face hardly comes to Dubai. You can't take a day off. Baba, nobody can take a day off the grind. Most people, I'm sorry to say you might be abroad and you're listening to me. And I must tell you, you are like a rat on a treadmill. You're running for the government. They'll pay you, they'll put a picture of cheese that you're running towards and give you a little here and there. And you see, because your country is so bad and so insecure, at least one thing I like abroad for is I can get on a night bus abroad between London and Scotland and my mind will be at rest that armed robber will not attack, ritualists will not ritual. Do you see, and those are the those are issues we're facing, we're faced with in Nigeria. I cannot even lie. But you see, aside that, I won't live abroad. I wouldn't live abroad. I might live abroad. You get the way Nigeria go rough. I'd rather go and work in McDonald's and have peace than live in the madness. But I know I'll be depressed. <laughs> Abroad is 100% better than Nigeria. I beg to differ. People who live abroad, many are depressed. I saw a video. What made me talk about this? I saw a video about um, a young lady who said that uh, you come in abroad, they will mess with you every day, five days a week. <laughs> I just saw the video. I, I, I'm, let me, let me, I can't play it because of um copyright related issues i'm looking for it
So, let's be honest. Forget about the sugar coating. Can you be honest with yourself for once? It's easier to make money abroad is actually relative. The industries you'll be in in Nigeria, you will make so much more money or you will save so much more money than you'll save abroad. Yankee sweet, Yankee sweet, Yankee sweet. Now the passport sweet too. If you are living in the Yankee system. <laughs> Every society has its ups and downs. If Nigeria were fixed, as in you can travel by road, there is security, we don't have an exploitative government, things actually work. I'm telling you the truth. I will ne right now I still in as much, much as Nigeria is on his head upside down. I still won't live abroad. The only thing that will make me want to relocate is the, the threat of war. And that I would consider it. <laughs> Someone said, for my children's sake, I prefer to live abroad. Sometimes, to be very honest, I see that as a statement bereft of foresight. Abroad will give your children the illusion of many opportunities. But you see, at the end of the day, I've dealt with a lot of children raised abroad. I don't see them better than children raised in Nigeria. To be very honest, oh, they had more ball games, they, but they have their own sets of trouble. Just as they've allowed them to be more emotional, so are they more drenched in their emotions. Nigerians' children still manage to control their emotions a bit because one man know any, you get the kind of emotion where you go get, you go chop cane on top of your emotion. So, I wouldn't say abroad children are wayward. I would just say they have a distorted, you know, abroad makes it oh, all about the children, all about, and you are a child and enjoy it, oh, it's all about me until you grow up. And then you are 21 and you realize that Ain't nobody got time for you. You are an adult that grew up with the government telling you that, look, whatever, if your parents mess with you, we will take you away from your parents. We will take care of you. We will take care of you. We will take care of you. And now you are 21. Nobody takes care of a 21-year-old. You are now on your own. And you have your emotions to deal with. You understand? In Nigeria... It's a bit of a balance. You know, you can't just go and report your parents to the police like you can abroad. So it's not all about you. Your parents also have a say. Abroad, huh? parents, if you take your child late to school three times in a, in a semester, welfare fee collect the picking from you. Anything you do, welfare. So the children are little idols walking around. You're idolizing over them. You nothing, And then they turn 21. And then they realize that shit, life is not exactly what we thought it to be. So you are faced with a reality that you are not capable of. Nigeria, your parents don't allow you to go out. Abroad, go out. Go see Asi Beef outside. You will use your two legs to run back to the house. Some people think abroad makes everyone sit up. Sometimes it has the illusion. And one of the worst places abroad, American people, please don't be angry. You're on abroad, now nonsense abroad, do not deal. Abroad, we person go don't wake up one day, carry gun, enter street, begin the buy people. Forget anybody with the America, you know they abroad. Na condition I carry you keep for where you are. Small now America take better Nigeria. Small like this, now you take. Forgetting you can get a house, you can get in one home, they like. Abroad is, I'm talking of those places where I'm Robano will rob you, nobody will shoot you gone. Places like Luxembourg, places like um, Ireland, places like um, 
uh, Switzerland, all those better, better abroad, all those Sweden. Now, those ones that they call abroad, no, be America, Canada, and uh -huh, here, those ones be abroad. America, now, nonsense abroad. Now, small, it takes better past Nigeria. The only thing with the America, we say you get small right, and the day the government decide to mess with you, you go realize even that right, you just think so you get them, you not get them. So now I want you all. <laughs> Finland better abroad. To think a little before you join me on my live. Think a little. I want to talk about the other side of living abroad. Everybody seems to spell out the rosy side. Oh, things work. Road is good. Um, you will call police. Police will come. Let's talk about the depression. Let's talk about how hard it is for men to stay married. You understand? If you marry Oimbo woman from there, the woman are your guy. Any day you mess up like this, you will come out for house. If you bring woman from Nigeria home, she will do okay for one or two years before Akata enter her brain. The moment Akata enter her brain, she will become your ga and she will do worse because this one a village or ga. At least your former or an American or ga. This one a village or ga for America. <laughs> Someone said, hospital, you'll be dying and you'll be like, that's Britain. That is Britain. UK. They go give you appointment. If you cannot pay cash, you don't want to live in the UK. You don't want to fall sick in the UK. America is another place like that. The hospital system is, if you're on NHS, there's only how far NHS will go. In that regard, Nigeria is suffering too because Nigeria you don't even have the options. And that's why I said if they could fix those things in Nigeria, all of you will come home. I mean, all of you will come home. You will leave that depression there and come home. The reason why you all think you are enjoying is because nothing works in Nigeria. If Nigeria can fix education, if Nigeria can fix healthcare, if Nigeria can fix security, none of you, you guys, none of you will be where you are. At least 90% of you will have come back home. The reason you are there is because those things are not working in Nigeria. Forget it. So, the topic is the other side of relocating abroad. Please, I don't want to hear your good side. Keep it for you. I want you to come and be honest and discuss the other side. If you talk about, oh, America is so good, I will remove you from my life. Now, once, I don't even get patience today. We are talking about the other side. That side that you are embarrassed to talk about. If you are embarrassed, leave it. Those that are. Let's talk about depression. Let's talk about waking up every morning and being a second class citizen. I was in the UK. Um, in a hotel with taste buds in, Strat in Strat Stratford. And there's so many times we are in the lift and we both people just press the lift and see that it's us, black people, and they'll say sorry. And they'll not enter the lift with us. There's no time I'm in the lift in Nigeria that anybody will see me in the lift and be afraid to enter. I, I look like a person who will bite you. The weather too is depressing. Whether you like it or not, you will feel it, especially now. If you, if you know no better, if that's where you were raised, you understand it. But sadly, I was raised in Nigeria, and I can feel that vibe. So, let's talk about the other side of the abroad. Like I said. If you are here to talk about the good sides of the abroad, we've been talking about the good sides of abroad forever. Today is not one of those days. If you start in uh, Nigeria, the abroad is still better, I will just yank you off. You know I don't have patience. I will just yank you one time. Stick to the rules and we'll all be fine. Break the rules and I'll yank you straight out. 
of the life. Hi, Hi how are you doing? Good. You always accept me. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So, the other side of relocating abroad, what is your experience? Ooh, everything. Oh, wow. I can't believe we lost her. Having your child here, like, you know, back home in Nigeria, it's very easy. You have people around you, you know, you you would rest. Like, you have time to rest. If baby cries, there's someone there to help you carry your baby, you know. Mm -hmm. You have your mother, your mother-in-law, your parent, you know. They come, they rub your body, they give you pepper soup, they massage you, everything. But, yeah, it's here I know that. You see when they say your postpartum depression? It's real. Hmm. It is real. We just we just say, oh, Nigerians or Africans, we don't, or we've not come to that realization that it is. It's happened. It's real. Like, real, real, real. Hmm. When you leave the hospital, you know, oh, you are alone. You are this. You know, you don't have any help. It hits you. It hits you hard. Like, it's not... It's not all bed of roast, you know? And here again, if you don't walk, you're not getting paid. Hmm. Back home in Nigeria, at least, let me say, for example, in a month, you're paid monthly, right? So you go to work. If you miss a week, you're still getting your monthly pay. Hmm. <laughs> if you miss a day, minus a day, <laughs> minus the hourly pay for a day, if it's two days, if it's a week, just take it out. Just know you're not getting paid. Even if you are at the verge of death, <laughs> they don't care. You're not getting paid. You wow. see? So in that excellent yeah, it's really, really hard. Like I said, I'm coming from the from the from the perspective of, you know, mothers that have their children here and everything. It's really hard. It's really hard. Mm. Otherwise it's not like for example now I'm in New York. Housing is crazy. That if, it, if you want to get an apartment, right? You have to pay. For example, let me say your apartment is like two thousand dollars. You are going to pay two thousand dollars in three places. You're going to pay for security. You're going to pay for monthly. That's four thousand. Then you're going to pay the agent in New York. Yes. For a that's, month. For example, I, I want to get an apartment now. And maybe that apartment is two thousand dollars. I'm just going to, if I don't know maybe the landlord directly, right? And I'm going to an agent. I have to put up six thousand dollars from my pocket just to hold that house. Two thousand for security. Two thousand for the for the one month payment. Then the two thousand for the agent. That's six thousand. And you're going to pay that six thousand monthly. No, 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 no. For the first month, your first, that's getting the apartment the monthly. You are paying your rent. Your two thousand. Two thousand. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, but if you want to just get that apartment, just this is in New York. Hmm. So it's not easy. It's not. It's not all all rosy. You know, people back home think it's easy. It's not. Hmm. It's not. It's not at all. Hmm. <laughs> It's not <laughs> because like me i just had my baby and i know what i went through and i did i had like a cesarean section so only me no help nothing it's <laughs> it's it's crazy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we've got to go god i'm a strong woman so god has been on my side so amen yes. <laughs> amen <laughs> the other lady what is your take? Hello. Hello. Hello, my darling. Hello, Daddy Freeze. How are you doing? So. The other side of relocating I'm okay. abroad. Okay, sorry, if my, my voice is a bit bad. Oh, it's but, okay. Um, honestly, everything you have said about um, living in the Western world is a fact like 
honestly, it's really, really, really bad. And um, the depression rate in the Western world has skyrocketed. Like, people are really going through a lot mentally. Mm. People are really going through a lot mentally. And it's sad that back home, everything is so messed up. If Nigeria was in a very stable condition where things are well structured, I, for one, know that 80% of diasporans will be back home. Mm. Because to be honest, there's nothing really special about the Western world. There's nothing you can tell me about the Western world that I do not know because I grew up here. Mm. It was when I wanted to get to know my grandparents that I came back to Nigeria. And anytime I come to Nigeria and it's when I, when I, the thought of coming back to the UK scares me immediately when it's three days to me returning back to the UK, I, 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 I begin to feel kind of depressed. Like I'm kind of unhappy. Mm. And even though the country back home in Nigeria, even though things are like really, really tough, anytime I'm home, I'm always happy. There's this warmth in the atmosphere. There's this, there's this feeling of love. I know we have issues back in Nigeria, but there are issues here in the Western world. People don't really realize things are happening. The crime rate has increased. Um, finance is, is, it's not even manageable. Mm. You have to, you have to really, now the inflation rate has gone up and it's not that wages are increased. So what's special? Mm. What's special? And the fact that people are so moody, people are even so cold. So what's special about the Western world, please? Mm. The only thing, the only thing here is that everything is structured. Nothing is even free. Even the, the, the ground you step on, you pay for it through your tax. The mm. only thing we don't pay for is the air we breathe. So tell me what's special. You're buying a 650,000 flat that doesn't even have a parking space. So what's special? Mm. 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 No, what's special? You're buying a flat of 800,000 pounds that doesn't even have a balcony or two parking space. And at the end of the day, the land doesn't even belong to you. So what's special? What's the hype? Hmm. What's, what's the hype? There are places even in the UK that I've never even been. And there was a certain time I went to, I passed through Peckham for the very first time and you'll be so surprised that I've been to Peckham the many times the condition of the environment trust me, you'll be like and that I've only been there once mm. and they, you know, they kind of paint, they kind of paint um, UK like it's one um, saving grace, no the poverty rate in the UK is alarming because I've walked I've worked with Croydon Council, I've worked with um, Lambert, and presently I'm working with St. Christopher's at Putney. So what do you want to tell me? I know everything that is happening. Is it the depression rate? Is it the mental health rate? It's scary. There are cases that I'm handling that even scares me. It takes, it, right now I'm even working. I'm on my laptop. And I still have to get up the next morning to go to work. What kind of life is that? Like you walk five days of the week, even the weekend, your weekend is so consumed with um, leftover jobs, 
you barely have enough time for yourself. So what's special? Mm. There is nothing free. Even if you have a good job and you just have one job, at the end of the day, nothing is free because you are giving out your service. Mm. You are being paid because you are giving out your service. So what's, 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 I mean, what's special? Mm. We have every, somebody else that just joined us. Every good thing you, 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 you want to achieve, you have to work, but work hard for it. So what's special about the Western um, world? We have somebody that know. just joined us. Uh, let us hear her side of it too. So, hello. Hi, <laughs> Hi, your network is so bad. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? <laughs> All right, so give us really yours real quick. I, I just got out of the gym, that's why. Okay. Okay, so I am actually an immigrant in the United States. I mean, this is where I I live. Ah, <laughs> this thing uh, with Africans, with I want to go abroad, I want to go abroad. Man, it's not easy. <laughs> Okay, the only thing that I would say uh, is the fact that I, I have a, uh, a, the, the green card you know, to work. You know, I, I have some advantages compared to that as a green card. Now. First of all, before you can get a job, oh, you man, network get is so job. bad. Network is so bad. So sorry about that. So sorry about that. Um, let me bring somebody else. The topic is the other side of abroad. Don't come and tell us abroad is good. I will yank you out. We are talking about the people that want to actually tell the truth of what they are going through in that no, abroad. Daddy Freeze, please let someone come. No, let someone come to talk about abroad is good because I know everything. All you right, know? we have a, a lovely lady with us. Sorry, Hello, introduce you yourself. Me. No, you would know everything. So I want to, I want, I, I want someone to come up and tell me the the milk and honey that exists in the Western world, either in America or in the UK. All right, let's hear you. We've got a lovely lady here. Hello, lady. Hi, Daddy Freeze. How are you doing? Oh, yeah, Hi, how are you? I'm, I'm good. good. Long time. <laughs> Long time, my darling. How are you? I've been busy. Um, I just wanted to say, oh, sorry. I just wanted to say it, it depends on everybody's perspective of making it. Like, what is your definition of I have made it, right? So if you're in Nigeria, if you're in wherever you think you are, if your perspective of making it does not correlate with that country that you're going to, it's not going to do anything to you. It's not going to change anything. And I know most people just want to jack by out of Nigeria because of the lack of, uh, uh, what's it correct, uh, what's that word? Opportunity, right? But if you're in Nigeria and you have the opportunity to, to rise and you weren't able to make use of it, what what's the guarantee that when you get to where you're going, you'll be able to make use of that opportunity, hmm. right? True, Nigeria is like, going down the train but abroad is not as easy and nobody is saying it's easy but everybody wants to come without a plan and that's why everybody most people get here and they're struggling and most people get here and they're depressed there's no family there's no friends and there's nobody to run to uh if you for example if you if you lose your job you have less than three months to get back up but in nigeria you have a, an auntie or an uncle that you can go to and stay with for a while or they will give you food until you can get yourself back up mm. outside of nigeria there's no such thing if you have no savings that's it your house is gone if you can't pay your mortgage your car is gone if you can't pay your car payments you're completely out and then you have to start all over your rendered homeless you it's just the opportunity is there at the same time, you have to pay for it. It's like, like I was telling my mom, I was like, mom, everything you need is here, but you just have to pay for it. But in Nigeria, it's totally different. And if you cannot work to pay for that, that life that you want, 
you're going to be finding yourself roaming, roaming around and walking around in circles and, you know, being so consumed by, by, by the, the whole thing, the whole situation, the whole scenario. You know, mm. so, and that's what I keep telling people. Like, I'm not even discouraging anybody. Mommy, I swear to God. Mommy, that that is mama now. Okay, go to mommy's room. <laughs> oh, I'm so not sweet. discouraging anybody to to leave Nigeria. That I just that, want you to, okay, give mommy a second, okay? I just want you to, to have it in the back of your head that where you're going is not Nigeria. It's, mm. You cannot do, you can have the same mentality and the same mindset that you have living in Nigeria and go to UK, US, Canada, anywhere. Hmm. The Scandinavian countries are even worse, like Netherlands and all. Everybody thinks that because they have free this, free that. It's actually even different because at least America and UK are exposed to Africa and everything else. But all the Scandinavian countries, they're like completely secluded from anything outside of their little bubble. So you get there and the mindset is different, the, the perspective is different, and they just don't understand you. So if you want to come, please, please make sure that you set aside your mental health because mm. it's going to affect it, I'm telling you. It's not like in Nigeria where you just wake up like, ah, you know you know how we are entertainment. We'll be like, oh, we'll be fine. Now. I'll just go to my friend's house. All the mood, all the depression will go here. You're on your own, no, why? Oh, your neighbors, you don't even know them. They don't know you. You just mm. see each other, you say hi, bye, and you, everybody walks into their house, and that's the end of that conversation, you know? So it's stressful, but it's worth it if you have the plan and you're willing to work, like, really, really hard for it. Mm. Really hard. So I am not discouraging anybody, like I said. Please, if you want to, if you have a Jaffa plan, make sure it involves having a strong background like a strong foundation and be have people around you even if it's somebody you can always just communicate with outside of nigeria within where you're going or so like you know some kind of help and another thing i want to say people that are outside of nigeria let's help each other nigerians abroad we're yeah. so selfish and self-centered we don't help each other we don't. You will see Indians and all those people, they help. You will see five of them will buy a house and then we contribute money for another person to buy a house. But in Nigerians or Africans, they want to have the biggest house, the biggest car. They don't care about the next person coming. You know, so if we can help each other, have a strong support system, that would be really great. But again, I'm not discouraging anybody. Just have a strong plan and be mindful of your mental health because it's going to get to you no matter where you go. Mm. So that's my mini token that I want to contribute. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I want to jack. I want to jack. I show Nadi here. God bless you, OEBC. Um, God bless thank you. you um, I need to. I'm going to keep OEBC because she came last. I'm going to remove. Shay for me. Where are you? She's right there. Show you for me. Can you see me? Stacy, where are you? Yes, please. Okay. So, um, you guys, I'm going to have where? to remove one of you. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a fish and let it go. One of you is going to go. <laughs> okay. Who did I remove? You removed Shay for me, I think. Shay for me. Let me. Oh, wow. Just hold on. Because Sheifumi was, let me see if I can bring her back. All right, so let me bring Sheifumi back and then add some people that we bring in uh, back and forth to join us. Sheifumi, is that you? Are you back? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, so Margaret is here with us. Margaret, what is your take on this topic? Hi, How are um, you, my darling? I think everybody has touched almost everywhere, but there's one particular one <laughs> we've not touched from my own perspective. Um, you know, the issue about uh, families, like marriages in abroad, it suffers a lot. Hmm. We don't have that family or like values. 
because the system kind of um, I don't know they protect women a lot they assist single mothers they support single mothers in fact all this hardship we're talking about single mothers they don't talk about this hardship they can just decide to do 20 hours and just rest live in a fancy castle flat you know you will see people talk, talking, thinking about chasing their husbands just because they want to have that government support. That's mm. a big problem here. Yeah. And that's sometimes you see the same people say, oh, I'm a single mother. Man, I don't have, um, you have three kids, you have to run around. This. I'm not saying it's all of them that chase their husbands away, but that the fish, to be honest, eh, I will hide they see something here. Yeah. Even sometimes eh, people see Woman, do they prefer to this thing? Uh, mm. You understand? Then, in my own personal experience, so when I came, most my husband, my the, the ex husband, invited me to the UK. Before you know, any small problem, I'll send you back to Nigeria. You will see people threatening their spouses because of paper. That one, now the, now the first mental health where you go first get. Mm. In terms of that aspect of settling down with your own spouse, not every spouse, many spouses, the women, the women will be dealing with the men. The men will be dealing with it's not in the dog on the dog on the past say, I won't give you criminal records so that you know we'll get paper. It's a big deal here. Yeah. Honestly, people don't want to talk about the downside of our blood. I'm so happy for this topic because the whole sugar protein I say, hey, I have friends that are making it. They still say they won't go back. Once their kids don't reach that age today, independent, they go back. So it's not about saying you cannot afford the things that you're getting here. But there's just this thing that is missing, like you're far away from home. You just know that you're far away. I have my, my friend's husband is a soldier in NHS. Apart from being a soldier, he has his own surgery with other doctors. It's not like they don't have the best houses, the best cars. But you see, they're all, every day you go to the house weekend, they're on the phone. They're talking to families. They're mixing both. Mm. The Asians are okay because they kind of bring bring almost all their families, their grandparents, you know. Everybody's living with them. Some, somehow they feel at home. So you can't feel at home. But my own biggest part is that people are using this paper to, to like, Torture their partners. Mm. So many cases that you see. So many cases. Even when I wanted to come, I wanted to come to Nigeria to come and marry my husband because I got married again. I had like ninety percent of people around me say, "Ah, you want to go bring somebody from Nigeria? You know, be married for a year. Why you want to go to Nigeria go bring somebody? Hey, you know, you just get all these negative vibes all the time. And like this other sister said, we don't help each other. Nigeria person will see where you will fit, get scholarship. They don't tell you because they want to make only their kids get that scholarship for school. I don't see a lot of people. They tell me, say, why you tell somebody say your kid get scholarship? Just because I want to give them information on how their kids can get into grammar school or scholarship. They vex for me for what? So today topic, in fact, this is the best topic. We shouldn't be like this other sister said. As you're coming, keep your mental health aside. The road is bumpy. It's bumpy. More no the sugar potam. But if you as you find like this type of a bro, your color will change. I swear. <laughs> because that's why we they walk back to back. And this depression that they talk about there is not just um I don't know, I'm not going to talk about the uh, um, the arrow word. It's not about it's not just that one. There is too many debts that they freeze. You won't you won't get car finance, you get mortgage, you get this, they pay insurance, they pay this, they pay that. All this all this look, when would they talk about what would they pay? By the time months end, you the, the account don't dry. You don't go back to overdraft again. You understand? So you, you, you can't say everybody has to be rich. There's no way everybody will make up for this abroad. It's like make everybody jump, but maybe everybody will make up. Maybe everybody, but maybe everybody get the information, maybe everybody get the intelligence, maybe everybody know road. Because now they say IT they work now for everybody. Not everybody goes into the IT. Hmm. So let's talk. Let's well, think. So they, they come abroad, like you never finish high school for Nigeria, then they come abroad. So to start hard. 
Sir, this is my sister talk. As they come, you give your mental health there. So that you can't face reality. Then when you come, some of us don't, don't the day we manage day off, come dress well, go shopping mall, take picture, post stuff. They will still say that's so that's so you think they day every day. That thing I just off the day. Ah. Thank you, my sister. Let me let me try to see if I can bring so many more people. I love the passion with which you have uh, been speaking, Margaret. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Thank you so much. I want to just bring two more people. Um, they said I should bring guys. I've been inviting guys since they've not been coming. Um, and many of the guys, I know guys will come and they want to twist the topic to one side. So I've sent... Um, Two people, an invite, a guy and a lady, whichever one of them enters. Okay, the guy has come. Awesome. What is your take? Hello, that is Free. How uh, are you doing? Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, You're welcome. To come. <laughs> uh, like you said, um, this this just first of all the the environment. Is so different. I've been abroad for close to 20 years now. Hmm. And like recently, I was at home. Before I traveled home, I, I work in the IT sector, so I'm doing so well. And uh, by the grace of God, I work for, if you want to count, one of the top three richest guys in the world. I work for one of them. So, but there's a lot missing when you compare you know, home and abroad. What I meant by that is, each time I touch Nigeria when I land, the feeling that I get, the hair. I know people will say well, when you get off, when you get at the uh, get to Moita like Mohammed Airport, that heat and all that. But as soon as you get into the country, there's this awareness. Your body just feel like you're well. You know, so it's it's different. Then is it the food? If you want to eat good food abroad, you spend a lot. Yeah, I mean, I see what your 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 madam cooks, is, but if you want to eat those kind of food here, you you, you if you take fifty pound to African shop or hundred pound, the bag you will pick out of African shop is nothing. You know, but. If you live in Nigeria, you want to eat or well, you have that kind of money, you will eat proper, you know. Mm. And um, I'm a married man as well by God's grace. A lot of men, they are suffering. You know, things you can easily discuss with your partner when you're back home. You watch your back, you're careful, you know, you can't. You don't. You, you sometimes you're even you're not even sure what your partner is thinking because of the laws. You know you want to speak to your child. You're you, you're looking at the ways you want to say to your child because you don't know what's gonna happen unless you're that kind of parents that you know put your foot down in terms of you know disciplining your children and trying to bring them up the right way. So a lot of us we we, we cause the problem as well. You know, I see some guys when we're going home, a uh, few months before going home, buy yourself package, buy new clothes. So when you get home, every day you're wearing new clothes, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, and everyone thinks it's just like that. Come on. When you, when you get back, you're back to reality. You know, it's it's one quarter past one. <laughs> if I show you the front of my screen, uh, I'm in on laptops, on computers working. This is outside my working hours. I work during the day. I'm at home anyway, but you, you just have to be on your, on your own. You have to keep working. Like this morning, for example, I received my water bill. I was looking at it, 450 pounds. You know, my mom is, my mom lives with me. I brought her from Nigeria, but I was like, mom, look at water bill, <laughs> 450 pounds. I was like, eh? Is that what you people pay? I said, yes, that's the way we pay it. And if you don't pay it, nobody will pour. My house in Nigeria is Boho Hotel, and I don't think I'll use 450 pounds to drink a bottle of water for the next, uh, I don't know. Two so, years? <laughs> <laughs> so there's just, uh, like you said, 
so many things. People have good job. People, if two things can work in Nigeria, trust me, uh, just electricity and security, I personally, I'll buy one way ticket. Mm. Because as, as well, the opportunity to make, it's just that. Amen to that. Yeah, it's just that's the insecurity and electricity. The opportunity to make money is in Nigeria compared to, if you want to start a company, you want to start a business, it's easy to start when you're in Nigeria. If you want to do it here, <laughs> it's very difficult, first of all, because of your color, your, there's so many things. I mean, if you're selling just pure water, for example, the population, the market is there to over 250 million people. Even if we, we are more than that. We, I don't remember the last time we did census, we did headcounts in Nigeria. So the number is there when it comes to business. And that is why you see a lot of white people that are smart, Asians, they are coming to our country to do the business, but we are here, we're killing ourselves. You know, so it's it's not the jackpot run away. Like everyone I've been saying, you have to be mentally prepared. You know, I personally, there was a time I just have to take time off work for months because I was burnt out, walking, 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 walking. Days off, you're constantly looking at your phone, you're on holiday, sometimes you have to bring out your laptop, trying to do things, trying to, because if you don't, things are going to go left and your senior managers will bounce on you and be like, oh, you didn't do this or you're the cause of this. So you're constantly trying to get things to work. You know, so it's it's not easy. It's not easy. And I mean, Christmas, festive time, there are things. The way we celebrate Christmas, for example, in Nigeria, you know, everywhere is bubbling, things are open, families are visiting family. Over here, you just stay with your family inside the house for the, that two days of public holiday. It's like, it's like a dead, like a cemetery. But Christmas in Nigeria, oh my God, it's something else. You know, so there are a lot of things that uh, if our country, if things can work better, like I said, just two things, electricity and security. Forget the other things. People will fix it. There are people that will just road. People will fix road if there's electricity, there's security. There are people that will just do so many things to work. So it's it's not the way people paint it abroad, abroad. It's, it's, it's not like that. It's, it's, it's not... It's not. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. We're definitely continuing with this topic tomorrow, the other side of relocating abroad. Thank you so much, my wonderful guests. People are sharing uh, their sides of the story. I'm going to continue with this topic again, same time tomorrow. Um, I appreciate you guys for being honest and the, con the conversation continues tomorrow. Take care and God bless. Bye. Bye. Take care, guys. Lovely, lovely, lovely hanging out with you. That was an amazing, a really amazing topic. I had quite a few smart people on the live and um, I'm glad I actually did it. So we all have the opportunity to air our views and express ourselves okay the other side of relocating abroad boom share so guys Take good care of yourselves. Tomorrow we're back and make sure you are back with us.